Hello, I'm Judy Crow. This is Crow Farm, and we're located in Kennedyville, Maryland. This is a third generation family farm. My husband's family purchased the property in the 50s and renovated the farm, and they became vegetable farmers. And from there, my husband took over and he uh, had a dairy herd and subsequently sold the dairy herd and now has an insurance agency in M Middletown, Delaware. And that left the farm for an opportunity. And what we're doing now is sustaining the farm through current management practices and embracing agritourism, bringing the public here and having them experience the farm and know the farm as we've known it for years. We've taken the 1847 farmhouse. What we did then was say, okay, well, if we're going to be bringing people out to the farm to visit the farm, let's make a bed and breakfast. So we renovated the house, and we have geothermal air conditioning, heating, and all new windows and all new insulation. It's, it, it's like a brand new home, but it really has the feel and essence of the way that it's been for a number of years. It feels like home, and that's what the guests say when they come here. You know, these are folks from New York and Philadelphia and Pennsylvania and New Jersey, and everybody has some connection or roots to a farm. When they come here, you know, I, I share our story with them, but they also share their stories of what they remember, what it was like visiting their grandmother or visiting their aunt or their uncle had a farm and they'd go visit there. And it is very invigorating for me to know that people are still excited to know about what it's like to live on a farm. We have the guests participate in farm activities if they want to help me feed in the morning. They're certainly welcome to do that. I'm encouraged to do that and same way in the afternoon. We've been very intentional with expanding our pastures for our grass-fed beef. Now our herd is up to 80 plus. The, the practices for grass-fed beef, we have to look at you know what is best for human consumption. And what we believe is best for human consumption is animals that can move freely on grass pastures. Now we do regulate how they go into a pasture. They're on one acre paddocks for one and a half days and then they're moved to a new paddock. So there is some directional um, rotation, they call that rotational grazing. And they have to go back and forth from the pasture to the barn for water. So they're getting exercise, they're moving freely. And when we have like a drought we had this summer, we feed them corn silage and hay, all that's grown here on the farm. And it, it's just healthier for human consumption. And I think that what's healthier for the animal and more peaceful for the animal and agrees better with the animal's diet ultimately is going to be better for us as consumers of the, the product. So that's why we chose to do it that way. We have a couple of restaurants that we sell to on a weekly basis. We work with the chefs. They come out here and they choose the cuts of meat that they want, or we work with the chefs and the butcher to decide you know, what cuts they're going to have. This will be our first year making wine. We're going to be using a custom crush model and taking our grapes to Old Westminster, a winery on the western shore, and having our grapes crushed and fermented there, and then we'll bring them back to the farm. And we'll have a tasting room set up in our old milk house in early spring and have people come to the farm and enjoy the beauty of the farm. And we're simply here as caretakers of the land. And then it's our responsibility to preserve the land and keep it in such a way so that the next generation will be able to enjoy it. I think that our philosophy for finding ways to take the land and make the crops a little more contemporary and attractive to the next generation will be beneficial ultimately for all of us in this area. When people come to the bed and breakfast, and we always negotiate what time would you like to have breakfast, and they say, well, what time do you get up? Well, we get up at 5.30, and, you know, we've been up at 5.30, they get up at 8.30 or 9, and they have breakfast, and they always comment, how do you find energy to do all of this? And our comment is, it's just a way of life. And when you love what you're really doing, you have lots of energy to be able to do it.